using me to bless Buddha. If I don't drop the pick, he don't get it. So it worked out. <sighs> you seem to be all over the field yesterday. Uh, obviously, you're not going to wish any ill will on any other player, but Byron being down gives you more opportunities. Just what were you thinking going into that game, being able to play so much more? Uh, just doing as I have been doing since camp. You know, it's just showing that I'm consistent and that I can play ball. And that, you know, no matter who goes down, that if I got to step up, ain't no drop off. You know, I'm going to do what I got to do. And uh, I'm going to represent the team and the defense well. Every week this defense is shutting down the top receiver. What is it at practice or that Vance is having guys do that you found so much success there all year? Uh, just honing in and locking in on the uh, scheme that we have at hand. And then uh, Coach Harp saw all the time about our leverage. You know, we kind of a leverage style based defense. So, you know, if you can keep your leverage and understand what they're trying to do to us schematically, and uh, just make the plays and the opportunities that come your way. So um, we've done a great job of doing that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Antonio, just with Buddha, it's supposed to be out for multiple weeks, but they have been playing. But how big of a lift did that give just this group as a whole? Uh, a big, a really big lift. You know, he's our captain. He's our leader. You know, he provides a lot of juice for us. You know, he gets us going. And then it just to show just a, the type of player that he is, like he's willing to sacrifice his body no matter what, um, injured or not, you know, he's willing to, you know, put it all on the line for the guys because, you know, we all need him. And uh, he needs us as well, and we all feed off of each other. So it's just a testament to him and how well, you know, outside of just, you know, just the, you know, in-season uh, uh, training, how well he recovers and does what he needs to do in the off season to be able to come back from an injury like that so fast. That that's just not on a, a week to week basis. That's from time of putting in the work, and so that your body can you know recover and respond the way that it needs to. That being said, are you guys surprised that he was able to go? Not at all, <laughs> not at all. Uh, he was walking around the facility earlier that week, and it was just like, uh, I'm doing pretty good. You know, it's getting better. It's feeling better. And came Wednesday, he was like, hey man, I can kind of bounce around a little bit. And come Thursday, boom, you know, I'm feeling real good. I said, okay, he's playing. Just watch. Practice Friday, it was over. We already knew what time it was, came Sunday. I guess it's been about six weeks since you came back. How much better are you feel now since then when you came back? I'm doing a lot better. Uh, got my win up, uh, obviously, from playing, you know, a lot of the special teams reps that I've been doing and coming in on third downs. Uh, and playing the, the number of defensive snaps that I've been getting has done nothing but uh, propel me forward. And the amount of reps that I get at practice, I get really good quality reps. I try to take as many reps as I possibly can, whether that's, you know, defense, seven on, uh, and even with one-on-ones to harp in on my technique uh, because that was always my big thing. Like, I wanted to make sure that my technique didn't fall off uh, from, the, from my injury. So I always try to work at, at work. How do you guys approach a game like this in Mexico, is it like a regular road game, or is it, do you guys look at it any differently because of the altitude, or because of it's being out of the country, or anything like that? Uh, no, we you know we 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 stand along with the process. Uh, we've we done a few little different things, nuances as far as like uh, uh, bike rides with uh, the elevation mass, something to help propel us. But you you can't really you, you can try to prepare for that, but you really can't. It's just all about you know. Once we get there, to be able to know that you know you got to stay focused, stay locked in, and control the environment. You know, you go out there and you know three plays in and out off the field. You don't have to worry about the altitude. You know what I mean? So it's just honing in on the uh, game plan that we have, and uh, knowing that if we eliminate the things that they do well, the altitude will affect us. What did you think of uh, what Colt did yesterday? Oh man, Colt is phenomenal, man. I call him Colt McCoy. That's what I call him. I don't call him Colt. I call him Colt McCoy. Uh, but, man, he's a veteran, man. He's been in this league for a long time. So the guys already knew just based off of what he did last year. You know, he came in, played, what, four games for us. We went three and one in his time. And uh, it's just to show, like, how, how great of a veteran and how great of a player that he still is in this place and point in time in his career and, like, how he prepares. He prepares every week as if he's going to start. And I love talking to him. He's always giving me feedback, and I'm doing the same. And uh, he just makes everybody better. And he just has that type of effect on his team. What kind of stuff has he helped you with or told you? Uh, so, for instance, like uh, when I'm at practice and we're in certain coverage, you know, he seems like, hey, man, you have great leverage in this in this spot. And say if we were like in a, 
like a cover three. I'm outside leverage. He like, hey, I can't fit that ball in the inside because of the way that you were playing it from the outside. So I say stay in that position. And if anything else happens, because like uh, I'm sure you guys have seen, uh, I had three weeks in a row essentially where I gave up a seven cut, which is a, a corner route. Uh, he was like, man, I think you should do this because your leverage and everything that you've been doing has been right. I think that you should give yourself a little bit more space because this is where we're trying to hit the ball when you're in this position. And so just me getting that little bit of a sense of uh, understanding it helps me that I know that, okay, I'm at outside leverage. I know where the ball is going so I can put myself in a better position to make a play so I can see the quarterback. How was your uh, – you are talking about doing better in terms of physically. How was your body doing after 11 tackles? And- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing fine. Uh, I, I don't think I ever had uh, ten tackles in a game, not even in college. And so that was, it was, it was strange, but it all happened so fast. Like I didn't even know it until they said something about it. I was like, dang, I really had ten tackles. God, oh, that's a lot of tackles uh, for a corner. Uh, but man, I did what the coaches asked me to do, and I knew that a lot of the, uh, the run schemes that they did were going to roll off the table and fall, fall to me. And so I had to do my job and feel whether it was crack replace or, or setting the edge, I knew that the ball was going to come to me. So when the ball gets to me, I got to make my play. And that's my hard down for the defense. So I'm willing to sacrifice it. It is funny when you talk about a cornerback doesn't usually have that many tackles because usually that would be a very bad thing. Right. Feel, but it, it, it wasn't that way yesterday. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, if you see corners with 10 and 12 tackles and 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 – Maybe a win or a loss. Uh, might have been a long day for him, uh, but not like you said, not in my uh, instance. And I think I played a really, really solid game. Uh, of course, I missed the interception. Uh, I wish I can get that back, um, but it is what it is. I know more opportunities to come. You know, it'll come back around for a circle, and I'll make that play. Um, but I didn't give in, up any catches in man. I was pretty sticky all day, and uh, it felt good. As a player, you see the league playing all these games, international places. Uh, how do you feel about that? And I mean, do you kind of embrace it? Is it something just part of what the league is trying to do to grow its brand? Oh man, I think it's really, really dope uh, because uh, it gives the the players uh, an opportunity to go to international places. Like me, uh, I played when I was in Oakland. We played in Mexico City, so I've been there before, and I had never been to Mexico. So it was dope that it was almost it wasn't a vacation, of course, because it was work. But I got to go out of the country for the first time in my life, and so it was an amazing experience for me. And uh, I always look forward to those games. I'm always like, whenever I sign with a team, I'm like, damn man, let's see, let's see if we going to Paris or whatever uh, <laughs> this year, so I can make it kind of like a trip. You know, me and the family, we could go and experience this for the first time, and I get to play. So it's all, and I get paid too. Oh man, <laughs> shoot, man, it's a win-win. So I, I love it, man. I think it's really, really dope, and I'm sure that they enjoy it as well. Is your wife coming with you? No, 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 no. Yeah, my wife is like two to three more weeks out from having a baby, so. She's, you know, she's just, you know, getting locked in. She's in her grind mode season right now preparing, and so am I too. So I'm like, dang, yeah, it's almost crunch time. So, so when, when Zach had his baby, when JJ had that, they managed to time it very well. So it, yeah, and so are you concerned about the timing of this? I know. So right now we have a plan just to let everybody, uh, anybody who wants to know in on the plan. So we have a bye week right after Thanksgiving, and that's when she's 37 weeks. So that's our plan to do like the, if you know anything, Brad, I don't know if you all have kids or not, what we're going to do the membrane stripping. So far, we've been 100%. Every time we've done it, the baby came the next day. So our plan is to do that. I think it's on a Tuesday or Wednesday um, of the bye week. And so hopefully uh, it'll, it'll come like clockwork. And uh, my little man will be here, my little junior. So, yeah, it'll be amazing. How would you describe the difference in fan atmosphere playing in Mexico City compared to a normal NFL game? States. Uh, so, so back in the States, though, you, you really have, you know, just one side or the other. I think from what I recall, when, I, when we went and played in Mexico City, it kind of really wasn't like that. The game was loud the entire game. So it wasn't like a momentum shift or a sway outside of the plays. You know, of course, that happens on the field. But the fans, they just cheer the whole entire time because they want to see – you know what I'm saying? The gladiator sport that we play. And, and uh, they love it, and I love it because 
not only do you know our offense has to have to deal with you know the noise of the fans, but they offense have to deal with it too. So it's a communication issues, and as well as on the defensive side. So we we have our our ways of you know talking our language in the back end to get calls made, and so I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. How you dealing with this season? Or how you're packing a lot into the 2022 season? You earned the spot. You got the load of the freak accident. Team successes and where you might want it. And then, you know, you got the baby coming. A lot of things going on this season. How you dealing with that? How would you describe all this? Uh, yeah, uh, I think God just give you only so much that you can bear. Uh, in which each and everything, you know what I'm saying, that you do or that you have going on, you know, uh, there's a plan for it, for it all. You know, it's only to build you and only make you stronger and nothing to really tear you down and make you weaker. So um, I just thank him that uh, he's just a great God that he is and that he provides me with these opportunities, whether they're hard or easy. And I just try to take whatever that comes to me in my way and I just try to handle it full-fledged on and just try to be the best at whatever the role is, whatever it is that I'm doing and, and, and just try to go from there. Obviously, it was important to get a win. How big was that? And also, maybe looking ahead now, that hard knocks will be maybe a little fun to watch. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I think it's a dope thing. I I don't really follow it like that, to be honest, so much just because I don't – I mean, I mean, I'm mean, i a realist, just to be honest. I'm brutally honest sometimes. So, I know there's a lot of the some, – some of the things, it could be kind of, in my, my eyes, like a little bit of like – political or they try to make it fun for the fans, but I don't really get into that stuff. I like to just try to stay keeping it at playing football and just being there with my brothers and not trying to be so perfect for the cameras because we know we got cameras on. Nah, man, we just, I'm, I'm me every day, all day, like no matter what. So I don't really, I don't really follow it, to be honest, <laughs> just to be honest. Have they followed you home yet? Have they no, nah, not yet. Uh, I think they said they're going to give me an opportunity just because they want to hear my story. And I think that's dope. You know, I get the opportunity to tell my story. And uh, I'm excited to see, you know, how it turns out. They, you know, I guess they get the interaction with my kids to see what I have to deal with when I leave work to go and play in another game when I get home because my kids don't stop just because I went to play the game or I had practice and been there all day. No, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. So I think it will be fun, man, just to see the human element of an athlete, you know what I mean, Cause, uh, and just to be like, like it is just – completely honest like we're not just football players we're husbands you know we're fathers we're brothers you know what I mean so we deal with a lot outside of just football or whatever else that goes on on the field is the win is the win does that shift the mood quite a bit in the locker room or are you, you guys think you're staying steady or does it feel like a, a boost of energy today? oh yeah vitamin w is always good you know, it makes it easier to go to work. It makes it easier to deal with the nicks, snacks, and bruises and pains. You know, it makes it easier to go to work. And so we needed that. And then, you know, because uh, we still have a great opportunity at hand. You know, we don't know how the rest of the season is shaping. We, we don't know if this was the turn of the tide as we did last year. What we started out with 7-0, and and then we dropped off tremendously, you know. Uh, so maybe this is the, 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 the tide has shifted where – where we started off rough, and maybe this is where we hit our streak and climb. You know, the Super Bowl is in Arizona, so we're fighting. We, we at this place and point in time, we have nothing to lose, so we going out there and just laying it all out. And it, I think we're playing better ball now that we're doing that. Which Coach Cliff did a great job was letting his guys know, like, hey, let's not be uptight, man. Let's go play ball, and, and whatever happens, happens. Huh? So let's roll the dice. PJ spoke about how. Or a point gets scored on him, feels like his, his soul leaves his body. <laughs> just wanted to get your take on just playing for a guy that passionate. And we saw a little bit of hard knocks of just talking about the boot and how you guys talked about the boot. There was the boot. So I just wanted to get your take on just playing for a passionate coordinator like that. Oh, uh, man, yeah. Uh, like he, like you said, like he's just a great guy. He's passionate. And he loves what he does, and he does it well. And he called a phenomenal game this game. I mean, uh, this game, he made it easy for us and where we could go out there and play fast and make uh, communications that we needed to. And um, it's like he's VJ. He's been a head coach. So, like, of course he loves the game. He's extremely passionate, and he's got a lot of faith and trust in his guys. And nobody likes to get scored on. Like, it's, it's not okay to give up a touchdown. But we know we have an, as, us as the players, we can't hone in on that play. We got to have that next play mentality because if we let that drag on throughout the game, man, we probably going to have a bad game. Thanks, Antonio. Thank you.
Does the wins always feel good, but did, did the team need a little boost of a, of a win like that? We needed that. Uh, on a division, on the road, hostile environment. Uh, we know uh, what that game has meant for us over the past couple of years. We haven't won that game, that matchup, uh, enough. Um, and the only way to make a robbery a robbery is you got to win games. And you know, to be able to win that game was a uh, was was a was a special feeling. To have four of your five starting offensive linemen as backups, rotation at left guard for start for Lasitas. I mean, what did you make from how the offensive line performed as a whole? You know, I think as a room, um, Coach Kugler talked about this all week, was we just have to find a way to rise above it. You know, uh, whoever's number was called had to find a way to perform. Uh, we knew the task at hand. We knew the defense that we were going up against. We knew the issues that we had uh, as an offensive line. We knew we had to work together. And we knew we had to work together fast without a lot of uh, time on task. You know, so um, it was a great outing. You know, there are some things that we still need to clean up. Uh, uh, Leroy played like a rookie. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, he did a really good job against a, a very good pass rusher. You're always, I mean, in a lot of ways, you're the leader of the line anyways, even when everybody's healthy. Did, did you feel like you had to be even more so with with all these, all the reserves in? Yeah. You know, I, I try to be the same person every single day. You know, uh, I try to come in and be an example as best I can. Um, and I really didn't change up much, to be honest with you. I said a couple things more than I would say during a normal week, but for the most part, um, you know, the preparation stayed the same. You know, uh, the accountability stayed the same. Um, and we pushed each other. We held each other accountable. Um, and that's, that's a, a credit to the room. Not so much one person, but a credit to the room. How much have you had to help? Or how, much, how many questions has, has we'll see this asked in these last two years? <laughs> uh, he's asked a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> But it's been good questions. I mean, I think it's been uh, productive for, for him to be in this particular environment. You know, I've been in his shoes before, a late round pick, having an opportunity to, to um, you know, to, to go out there and start. And I told him this on Thursday night, man, first impressions matter. Uh, and he had an opportunity to make a great first impression in the National Football League, and I think he did a good job. The people that, you know, I've talked, I mean, obviously Colt had a, played a great game yesterday. Obviously there are people that are going to, want to extrapolate that out, and Kyler hasn't played as well. You guys still have that belief in Kyler. I mean, he was just hurt. And, and I guess I'm asking to, to tell the world just why that belief is there for Kyler and, and why it's kind of foolish to talk about Colt being there long term. I mean, this is a, the National Football League. When guys get hurt, somebody has to step up. And the thing is, is the way you stay in this National Football League is you make great first impressions. And when you have an opportunity to go and um, – capitalize on an opportunity, you capitalize on it. And the code had that opportunity this week. Um, and we know that Kyler's going to do everything that he, get, uh, that he can to get back. And, and hopefully we can get this thing rolling and, and use this momentum to, to push us forward, uh, at least into the bye week. We've got a couple games into the bye. If we can close this thing out the right way and then come out of the bye and come out humming, I think we'll be in a really good position. What do you, what, what do you think it was that Colt did best from a big picture uh, look yesterday? You know, I just think he, he really just, you know, preached the entire week. Be where you need to be. Uh, know your assignment and do your job. Uh, the same things we preach on a daily basis. So I think he was just, you know, harping on it quite a bit. And I think guys took it to heart. And, again, when you, you have to rise up and you have, you know, adversity that comes, um, you got to find a way to, to rise up. And you had guys across, especially offensively, that did, did what we needed to do to, to execute in those critical moments of the game. How do you approach a game like in Mexico City? Is it is it like – another road trip or is it different because it's Mexico it's you know I think it's Mexico because it is Mexico um, the elevation is going to be uh, high we know that the the smog is, is real there we know that it would be difficult to breathe but at the same time I think we're taking the approach that we're going to leave you know like this is a you know East Coast trip and we're going to leave a day early go in and take care of business get on the plane and come home uh, we know we have a division opponent on the road even though this is a quote-unquote home game uh, but we know this is the division and ga uh, division game. We know they just won last night, so we know that um, you know you got two teams coming off of, of great momentum, and somebody has to, to find a way to get it done. Um, it just happens to be in Mexico City. Uh, we know the game in Munich was was a was a success for the National Football League. You had great excitement around it, um, and we know that this game in Mexico is going to be you know, even heightened because you actually have a fan base that knows what they're looking at. So it's going to be a great environment. What's your thoughts on just playing those international games and just seeing the game kind of grow? I love it. I love it. I think the, the, the National Football League is, is really starting to expand. You know, you had NFL Europe a couple of years ago that didn't pan out as uh, as 
in the way in which we wanted it to, but I think this this new expansion and the way in which we're going about it is is, is really good for the National Football League. It's really good for football as a whole, not only the National Football League, but flag football. You know, getting uh, you know all types of people from all different uh, social economic backgrounds involved. Um, Genders involved as well. I know females are playing flag football, which is great. So I think this is doing a really good job of, of making this an international and global game. Chris, that game, this was the first game in a couple of weeks where they basically just told James, full out, just go. Yeah. With the two rushing touchdowns, I mean, when he's healthy, he's able to perform the way he did. How much of a difference maker is he for this offense? It's great. You know, I actually told him after the game, I'm like, I'm like, we need to get you 30 touches a game. He was like, I don't know if I can handle that. But, you know, I think I've been, I've been really saying, you know, if we can get him 20 touches a game, I think it's, it's, it's really good for our offense. Uh, I really think that um, he provides that, that hammer from the, the running back position. You know, as offensive linemen, all we can do is make the hole. But when you got a running back, they can also deliver blows to DBs, to linebackers. Uh, it takes a toll on them. They get tired of tackling them. Or oh, they, they, they angles are bad, like the touchdown at the end. I mean, he stiff arms the guy and scores. I mean, the angles were just bad. It was just one guy that had to make a tackle. If he holds his leverage, you know, that's a two-yard game. Uh, but when you have that type of running back that's able to wear on a defensive backfield, uh, it takes its toll, and, and, and James does that really well. You're close, you're close with uh, you know, Pew and Will and Hump, all the, all the other guys. I mean, how do you look at just being the one guy that's still available? And then what do you, do you have a sense of maybe what those guys are going through? You know, we, we talk on a daily basis. We've got a number of group chats, so we're always communicating. We see each other every single week. Uh, me and Pew talking all the time. You know, Rodney's in the building every single day. So this is not a, a one-man show. Um, again, this is a unit. And we stick together. We work together. Um, even with, even though those guys are not in the lineup right now, they're still giving tidbits to guys who are playing in those positions. Rodney's on the sideline every single, uh, every single game, giving Billy uh, any instances or any things that he's seeing or even giving Coog some, some insight that, you know, we need to either change of protection or slider protection just based off of what we're getting. So all those guys, even though they're not playing, they're still finding a way to contribute to, to our success right now. What went through your mind when Colt went out and with the injury and then by the next series came back? Uh, you got to ask Cliff the look that he got when, uh, <laughs> when, when that happened to Colt. But, um, you know, it was an interesting ordeal to, to, to have that happen, especially on the screen, to, to get your quarterback hurt on the screen. Um, but, you know, at the same time, we knew that Trace was going to come in, and if we had to roll with Trace, we were going to find a way to get it done. You know, we still had to lead at the time. Um, we had an opportunity to go and drive, um, you know, drive the field and be able to score again. But uh, it, was a, it was one of those moments. It was a lot of ups and downs and roller coasters in that game. You know, Ertz getting hurt early in the game, Coke getting hurt. Um, it was just a lot going on in that game. But, again, we found a way to, to, to thrive at the end of the day. Kelvin, I mean, despite the backup quarterback and patchwork line, you guys, there seemed to be a <coughs> rhythm offensively that hasn't been there most of the year. And those self-inflicted wounds weren't there, at least to the extent that they have been. I mean, what clicked considering all those other I think we dialed back the offense and just kind of went back to training camp, honestly, just going back to the base stuff that we do, you know, on, on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, and we just went out and executed, you know, some of the most basic things that we do in our offense, you know, inside zone, outside zone, um, you know, quick game when we could, the screen game on the outside and the perimeter. And you had guys that stepped up. Rondell played an amazing game. Uh, Hop played an amazing game. AJ stepped up for us. Um, you know, Trey McBride stepped up for us. And, again, when guys' numbers were called, they found a way to thrive in those particular instances. How uplifting is it to have some vitamin W in the locker room, <laughs> as Antonio Hamilton put it? Vitamin W. What's vitamin W? It's a win. Oh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I was telling I was telling my wife this as I as I pulled into the the parking lot this morning. It's always great coming into the building with a win. I put it that way. Uh, it's, it's it's easy to squat on a Monday and it's easy to go and run after a game when you when you won. Um, but we need to have a little bit more of those, you know, uh, as we as we finish the season off. Thanks, Beach. Thanks, Beach. Big time. No, he didn't set me up for that one. <laughs>